Who is Miss Delight? A kind teacher who taught orphans at the orphanage school, or a mentally ill woman who is driven only by the desire for revenge and murder? I think many of you have already met this character in the third chapter of Poppy Playtime, and you have definitely wondered who she is and what really happened to her. And if you're here, I'm sure you'll get answers to absolutely all of your questions. Hello everyone. At first it might seem that Miss Delight is just another Playtime Co. monster like all the others, but I'm sure that after watching this video, we will change our opinion about this girl 180 degrees. Let's continue with our hilariously interesting video. Let's agree that we will start our story about this character from the very beginning of her life in the orphanage until her last breath in the third chapter. Or maybe it's all a lie and Miss Delight really did survive and you'll meet her in the future? At the time of this project, there was a casting call for the role of a teacher who had to be friendly and it was very important that she could get along with the children. And after the necessary candidates were selected, they were all turned into puppets and we see one of them in the third chapter. But to get the full picture, we need a little backstory. After being turned into dolls, Ms. Delight and her sisters, said to be about eight, taught the children and all was well until the so-called Joy Hour. The Joy Hour was a big event that took place at the Playtime Coda Factory on August 8, 1995. Many things happened that day, but we are most interested in this fragment where Miss Delight and her sisters are chasing one of the employees. We will tell you about the events after this incident, right after a little bit about the appearance of our lovely girl, so that in case you recognize her at night, and if it happens, you better look closely into her eyes and back away slowly. Miss Delight has golden lacquered hair and a crimson ribbon on her head. She wears a tattered crimson polka dot skirt, a torn acid-colored short-sleeved lantern shirt with a white collar, and a blue apron with an apple picture and a torn right strap. Her once wide smile is now completely distorted, exposing flesh and teeth. We will talk more about her smile, for it holds many mysteries and secrets. As I said before, Hour of Joy, Miss Delight, and the others were quietly teaching innocent children, but apparently our doll was the first to be influenced, and together with the other monsters, she started a massacre at Playtime Co. However, after happy hour, she and her sisters were locked up in the school. Supposedly, they were all trapped there by catnap. And when they were left all alone, that's when things got interesting. Of course, as time went by, there wasn't enough food for everyone, and her sisters decided to deprive her of food, which was the first call to Miss Delight's madness. Every day her hunger grew stronger and her anger towards the other sisters increased. And at the critical moment, our Miss Delight decided that the only way to survive was to kill all of her sisters and then eat them one by one. Which eventually happens, because out of her entire cast we only see one insanely angry and hungry puppet. The fact that her main trigger was hunger is reflected in the third chapter. Even in deep sleep, her driving force is hunger. While locked up, Miss Delight felt the presence of a creature. 99% of the time it was catnap, and it was his presence that compelled her to create her favorite barb. Barb is her own unique weapon, made out of pencils, rope, and most likely some kind of plasiline or chewing gum. Well, let's say she has a weapon, because that's normal in this environment. But how would you feel if you found out that for that time in her loneliness and hunger, she started to think of Barb as a real person and almost not his friend? I think that at least gives us a sense of how seriously mentally ill Miss Delight is. And it was Barb who caused what happened between Miss Delight and her sisters. At the critical moment when the other sisters locked the kitchen door from our Miss Delight, it was Barb who encouraged her and told her that she had to kill everyone else to survive. Since then, Miss Delight and Barb have been the most loyal of partners. But how exactly did she kill all the other sister teachers? The answer to that question is revealed in the third chapter of Poppy Playtime. I think many of you have noticed that as soon as we look at her, she immediately becomes motionless and does not move. But as soon as we take our eyes off Miss Delight, she immediately tries to come closer to us. It is possible that she thinks that if she stops moving, everyone will think she is dead and no one will approach her. And as soon as they turn away, they will meet our Miss Delight one-on-one, -on -one, and her mysterious barb will help her kill the others. Maybe that's how she killed the sisters, one after the other, hoping that no one would notice that she was missing. But you have to admit that it would be strange if there were eight nine of you, and after a while there were only four. I think in that case, the other sisters would have realized who was responsible for her disappearance and killed Miss Delight immediately. So I'm more inclined to believe that she pretended to be motionless to make everyone think she was dead, and then killed them all at once. So we see how crazy, bloodthirsty, and powerful this particular doll is. And in case you didn't know, all the organs of the real person who was cast as Miss Delight were transplanted into the doll, so inside she still feels exactly the same needs as we do. Her hunger was so strong that she was even willing to eat her own children. And that's where the other question comes in. We have talked about the fact that she feels the same emotions as we do, and that means that all the time until she was mastered, she had to eat something. And based on that, 
There is a theory that the part of the children that were saved by her sisters were eaten after the rest of the dolls were finished. One day, she discovers that the door that kept her locked up is open, which means it's time to get out. And as soon as she did, Catnap appeared before her eyes. At first, Miss Delight was furious and wished the cat dead for imprisoning her and forcing her to live through the horror that had happened to her. But after a while, there was a dialogue between Miss Delight and Catnap, and our doll realized that it was not Catnap who locked her up. We all know that Catnap only acts in concert with the prototype, and it is this main villain of the whole Playtime Co., and is responsible for everything that happened to Miss Delight. However, the doll realized that she couldn't handle them because their power is so much greater than hers. And she also learned that the prototype made a decision to choose the strongest sister among all the sisters and continue his work with her. The result of this meeting was the agreement that Miss Delight will be an ally of Catnap and the prototype and will report absolutely everything to them. Now let's talk about the introduction of our main character to Miss Delight. Remember the scene where we just entered the orphanage school and Ollie told us that our dialogue with him was over because he couldn't contact us because of the location. But just before the call went out, Ollie warned us that we were not alone in the room and that it was unlikely that whoever was next to us was our friend. And then we hear Miss Delight on the loudspeaker addressing all the students. It seems like she either doesn't understand what's going on because her mind has gone completely insane or she's playing mind games with us. Almost immediately, Miss Delight decides to talk to us. But what's most important in this situation is that she recognizes us and is very surprised that we're still alive, and she warns us to get out of here and stop looking for our missing colleagues because Catnap won't be happy about this. But actually, I think she's glad we're here because she thinks we're easy prey, which means Miss Delight might have new food. And she talks about it later, telling us that she will come to us if we continue our search. But we are not cowards and stay in this place. And as soon as we get to the generator, Miss Delight appears right in front of us. And also here we get a confirmation of the theory that she is sure that if she stands still when we look at her, she will appear dead and can easily kill us or anyone else. Maybe she is afraid of light or there are some other reasons for such aggressive behavior at the moment of switching on the backup power generator. And the end of our story with her was her death. By pulling a lever, we were able to crush her body with a giant metal door. We also know that the prototype makes dead toys part of itself and it is possible that Miss Delight's remains eventually became part of the prototype. Or maybe the prototype took Miss Delight's body and decided to resurrect her, because no matter what anyone says, no one wants to lose such a powerful assistant. And we'll probably see her in the fourth chapter of Poppy Playtime. And remember, I promised to tell you about her smile. Since Miss Delight is a puppet, the wounds on her body won't heal, which means they were caused by someone stronger than her or a group of characters. And I'm 90% sure that Joker's smile appeared on her face when she fought the other nurse teachers. And that concludes our video. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to give us feedback. Have fun and see you soon.